back, Dale, uh, here with Dylan. We're going to be deploying his new app into Zendesk, so figure this would be a good opportunity to make a little recording and show how we do that. So uh, let me share my desktop and kind of get started there. So I figure out the right desktop. Not that one. Should be this one. All right, you should see the Create Fill Notes app issue, right? Yep. All right, yep. cool. All right, so um, the way I always do this is the first thing I would do is like download the actual repo, which I've got here on my terminal. We'll screen that. We're gonna zoom in a bit. So um, you could do all this manually. The way I traditionally do it is just use the zat, uh, zat commands, which comes from their Zendesk application tools, Jim. And that'll actually do this. We got an error, so let's see what the error actually is here. Your version of, uh, that's annoying. All right, so it wants me to update my gem, apparently. But I know an easier way to do that, so let's copy and make nice Ruby version here. And I bet it won't do that anymore. Yeah, it won't. It's going to throw me a bunch of deprecated errors, but we're using a very specific version for our Zendesk apps solely because that doesn't really work well with the new versions. So this is kind of a cheater way. And I know they have a new thing they're releasing that will um, also do this package command. And I'm writing a Ruby gem for us to use an ops that'll do the similar kind of task of just packaging it. Because at its root, a Zat package just does a couple quick checks to make sure, like, is the manifest readable? Is there any like, tokens that could potentially be there? Um, and then it just packs this all into a zip file. So from there, I'm going to go into Zendesk. Going to zoom in so people can see what I'm doing. Uh, you'll click the four squares here and go to your admin center. And we're going to just type in app here and go to Zendesk support apps. Click this load and I'm going to click upload private app. And so you just called it field notes, right? So we're just going to call it field notes. Yep. Yeah. So we're going to go to the apps. We want to go to field notes, temp, and there's our zip file. We want to click upload, and it's going to give us this nice warning about how this is creating a new app and all that stuff. So it's going to queue it, process it, install it. Um, I believe you have some private variables, so it's going to pop up with you need to enter all these variables first. Yep. And that's fun. It's not actually going to do what it's supposed to do. So I'm going to stop sharing real quick because I don't want to leak a token. <laughs> but essentially, we are going to input the variables that it asks for that you built into your app. Um, really should be whitelisting those, but sometimes it just does things weird. So we got our token there for the support bot, the project that used the field notes. Um, what should be there for the template name? I think it's just called field notes. Let me just grab it. I've got it written down here. Um, Let's see. Just called field uh, note, all in lowercase, all one word. All right, um, you do .md or just the name of the file? Just field note. Just field note. All right, cool. And we're going to want to restrict this because we don't want everyone doing it. This should just be support staff doing it, right? Yes, and I don't know if we want to further refine that to a more even specific subset of users, but um, definitely at the at the very least, it would be support. Yeah, so um, let's do it by group, and we'll do it by support of mayor, APAC, and EMEA, because that'll cover all the support, including ops and managers and all that fun stuff. Yeah. All right, and I am going to zoom one more time and scroll way down so I can share my screen again. That way it doesn't leak anything. All right, cool. After we've inputted everything there, we're going to hit install. We're going to see reload my apps, and we should see the field note app. There it is, field notes right there. You got the emoji, or you got the emoticon and all that fun stuff there. So now we can really go back, and all we really need to do is confirm that it is present. So let's do. Um, Should have an example ticket somewhere. 
There we go. Here's a test ticket. I can literally use any of these. Wait for the apps to load. And field notes is very likely going to be at the very, very bottom. You may need to do a hard refresh. Yeah, I had a hard homes. refresh. This, yeah. So I forgot. All right, so we're going to do a hard refresh. And there it is. So we're going to go ahead and... I kind of don't want to click it on this closed ticket because I'm pretty sure it's going to break your app. Yeah, that's actually something I didn't consider for the app is closed tickets, but... All right, so let's very quickly. Uh, an example. I'm going to very quickly make a test ticket. We're going to set this to support ops. Uh, not applicable. None of that really matters. None of that should matter. Created by agent stage FRT. If, if I did that right, I'm not about to get a bunch of errors on a ticket. And I did. Cool. All right. So let's go ahead and click create field note. Field note successfully created. There's our comment. So it says, you know, it's created its field note issue. Click this. And there's our field note issue. So we see how it's created by the bot. It's got everything we needed, got the label. And you know, on our ticket, it's got that updated there as well. Also, I can see that I very clearly have a bunch of terrible stuff just randomly in this org's <laughs> note, but that's okay. So we've got all that good to go. We should be good to go there. It's all live. So after we've deployed it, the important thing is to announce that we've done that. So this part I'm going to have you do, but essentially you will go to the support ops announcements channel. Mm -hmm. And then the bottom left by your text box, there's a plus icon. If you click that, you'll see there's a workflow for that channel called support ops announcement. I'm not yep. original naming. If you click that, you're going to get a form that you basically can enter the information on. So um, obviously it's for support team only because only support can use it. Uh, what's changing? You know, I'll let you pick wording on this one, but essentially we created a field note type. Yep. And then for when is it changing? Well, today. So 2022-09-19 because it's now live. Yep. And why is this changing? It was requested or whatever the reasoning was for that. Uh, request link, you'll put back to your issue there. And then the important thing here is you notice when I tried to use it, I had to hard refresh the apps to see it. So on the anything else to post with this templated message, you're going to want to yeah. go ahead and say, hey, you're going to need to refresh your Zendesk apps on the sidebar to actually see this pop up. It should be located at the very bottom. Yeah. Uh, you can even say below mechanizer if you wanted to, but very bottom should be relatively easy to find. Yeah. Cool. I can do that. Is there anywhere else that we need to post or is it just through so that? Uh, once you've done like... that, you want to cross post the post that it makes into the support team chat channel. So you'll just copy the link of your post and say cross posting, paste it there. And then the last thing you want to do is create a spur issue. And I will link that to you. And it's, uh, it's going to ask you some questions, but we basically just filled out a form. So it's going to be kind of the same thing. This is going to be a support ops corner, your username, the short descriptive title where we've created the field note app. For the full mm -hmm. details, just kind of copy the other fields we had there. Like this was the request link. Make sure you refresh your apps. Um, and then beyond that, you just click send and it'll create an issue for you. Yeah, easy. I think the other, I'll, I'll also put a note They've got the APAC support team call today um, in about four hours or so. So I might put that, I'll put a note in there just to say that that app is, is live as well um, and bring it up in that meeting. Um, so I've got the agenda notes ready to go. Cool. Yeah. And I mean, it, you can communicate it anywhere else you want to. Those would kind of be like the bare minimum. Um, yeah. And then kind of in your issue, make sure you cross-link that support, uh, that SWER issue that you end up getting created. Um, you can find it by looking at your email because you almost instantly get an email because your username is going to be tagged there. Or you can go into the actual SWER project and find it that way, whichever is quicker for you. Um, mm -hmm. Add the time that we spent on this, you know, on what we just did. And then you can kind of, what I normally do is, market is completed and we set the due date for eight days out and say, I'm going to leave it open for a week to gather feedback. And then I'm closing the issue. 
not yeah. always necessary, but a good thing to kind of do. Yeah. But that's uh, the uh, basic gist of creating an app in Zendesk. Well, deploying an app in Zendesk, creating it to, you know, there's a lot more to creating it, but that's how you deploy the app in Zendesk. Yeah. And that's, you know, our processes around that fun stuff. So any questions, any concerns, comments, any of that fun stuff? No, all good. I think um, normally uh, the, the way this app sort of came about, it was kind of put together uh, haphazardly and on a bit of an ad hoc basis. I think normally we'd have a, a bit more structure around actually the creating it and, um, and rolling it out. But um, yeah, yeah, normally, no, that's, that's... you know, we planning it way in advance and all that fun stuff but um here's a fun fact most of the apps we have were not planned in advance it was we needed yeah. something so one of us built it and then we deployed it and we iterate from there so yeah. sometimes yes you will plan things quite in advance other times it'll be like this where it's like somebody wanted Here we go it. yeah yeah um most of the bit like the user lookup uh mechanizer stuff like that somebody wanted it so we created it there wasn't a huge amount of like for planning for it, um, which is fine. It's fine to build something, deploy it, and iterate from there. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. And one thing I'm going to challenge you to do is um, look at some of the other apps code and notice how I put like a line that says to make an issue for this app or to create or to look at the source code. I don't remember the exact wording, but you'll see there's like two lines on every app that says, click here to view the source code, click here to file an issue um, for your next right, iteration, yep. your next version. I want you to add that in there and then deploy yep. your, your updated version and make sure to always update that manifest version. Otherwise it will update, yep. but it gets really confusing to confirm your updates there sometimes, especially if it yep. was stuff that's done in the back end. Yeah. I even, I might even put the ability to uh, disable the create issue button on the closed ticket as well. I didn't even look at closed tickets until you brought that up. Um, this morning, so I think even just including that as well is probably a good thing because I don't yeah, know what yeah. will happen. <laughs> what I would say is make issues with these ideas under the app. That way you have them, and if you can't get to them immediately, it's cool. Backlog them. You can get to okay. them later. Yeah. Like, but it helps yeah. to at least have the issues to say, "Hey, look, no, this did come up. We are thinking about it. We're just not doing it right right now." Yeah. Now this might yeah. be something you look at and go, "I can do it in like ten minutes." Cool. Go ahead and do it. It's not a big deal. But if it's yeah, something okay. that you know you're like, I got other priorities. I wanna, I wanna do this, but it's backlogged. Yeah, cool. We have a support ops colon colon backlogs, which you know the rest of us as a team look at at the end of every quarter and say, what can we unbacklog? What can we focus on? Or you know, at some point we might run out of work to do, and then we can start looking at backlog stuff. Yeah. And then at some point we'll not have backlog, and we'll be out of work, and that's just the best situation we could be in. Yeah. Cool. Well, awesome. um, as always, if you have any questions, feel free to hit me up. For those watching the video, feel free to hit up any of the support operations team. We're always fun. You know, we're always game to talk about this stuff. Cool. Well, cool. I will see y'all around. All right. Thanks very much, Jason.